Hello, welcome to hashtag Ask LKC Medicine Tips for BMAT podcast. I'm Rehan, a year two student at LKC Medicine. Joining me are my friends Nian Yi and Sulaiman, also year two students. Today, Hello. the three of us will be sharing our, about our tips for the biomedical admissions test, also known as BMAT. We'll be answering some questions which we had about the test. As you know, applicants to LKC Medicine must take the BMAT as part of the criteria for entry into LKC Medicine's MBBS program. The format is different from both A-levels and polytechnic exams. It's a two-hour test broken down into three segments involving multiple choice questions and a writing task. That's why we're here to share our experience and to tell you what we did to prepare ourselves so as to give you more confidence to ace the BMAT. Let's start off by maybe just a quick introduction from uh, our uh, pre-university background. Yeah. So I'll start first. Uh, I'm Rehan. I was from NUS High School. So my school is a bit unique in that we didn't have A-levels and I managed to take a uh, triple science combination. So my experience may be different from most pre-university students out there. But uh, maybe I can provide some insight into preparation for BMAT. Uh, for those people who are not taking A-levels or who are through an unconventional path. Uh, Nyeni, you want to introduce yourself? Uh, hi, um, I was from Raffles Institution um, and I took B, C, and D in JC, which is Bio, Chem, Math, and Econs. And in secondary school, I took Triple Science. Hi, I'm Sulaiman. Like Nyeni, I was from RI also. And I had a similar subject combination for that. But uh, my experience is a bit different because I only took uh, the BMAT in my second year of uh, national service. So uh, unlike me, I uh, was able to take the BMAT without uh, requiring to study for A-levels at the same time. So I have a little bit of uh, difference in experience in that regard. So why don't we just start off by some uh, general questions about what resources do you use to prepare for the BMAT? So uh, maybe I'll start first. I feel that the, my holy grail for studying for BMAT was really the past year questions. Uh, they could really just tell you about uh, what sort of questions to expect from for the papers because generally they do follow a consistent trend instead of, in terms of the formatting of the questions and the curriculum and so on. So I think it's quite an accurate representation of uh, what you'll be facing on the actual day itself. And on top of that, I also uh, used a few of uh, BMAT books that I purchased. I think, I can't remember what mine was, but they really had a lot of like tips and tricks to like hack the BMAT, so-called. Like the essay component, uh, apparently there's like a, a structured way to phrase your essay so that you hit all the correct marks in the rubrics. So I, I found that really helpful when I was preparing for my paper. Uh, Sulaiman, you want to say something? So, similar to Rehan, I also used the uh, past papers quite uh, extensively. I also tried to get a few more questions to practice uh, the different sections of BMAT because the two sections are a bit different in that section one is very philosophy or argument driven, which is something that uh, most of us in Singapore have not been exposed to. So, I went to this website called BMAT Ninja where they actually offer free uh, questions to allow students to try for free and uh, I found it quite useful also because they really have a very very extensive uh, question bank I think almost a thousand questions for both sections and I try my best to do as many as I could. Then you about you. So for myself I also use all those resources that we kind of mentioned. Um, I think another thing that's very useful especially for section 2 is if you go to the Cambridge Admissions Testing official website and that's part of like a curriculum to the BMAT and then if you print that out you can see um, what are the specific points that they will test so if you make sure that you know those points then you'll generally be set for section 2 already and another website that I found really useful is called the Medic Portal so they will like like nearer to the BMAT season they will publish like my, many like blog articles about BMAT tips and also like the essay structure that we had mentioned just now. So. Yeah, those are really really good points. Uh, just one thing I really want to promote uh, for the past year papers is that you'll find that the at least a lot of my friends agree that one of the hardest points of the BMAT is actually your time management. The questions themselves may not be too difficult, but because of the sheer amount of questions and the very limited amount of time you have, time management is really the key 
into uh, practicing for the BMAT. So uh, when I did my practice papers, I made sure to set a timer uh, according to what the actual test paper was timed at and then tried to finish the paper within the set amount of time. Uh, in fact, I think even on the day of the BMAT myself, myself, I had problems with time management. I almost couldn't finish the paper in time. Uh, and in addition to time management, I think for the essay, there's a one-page uh, restraint. So not only do you have a time limit, but you have a space limit as well. Yeah, so it has a, it's, it's really difficult to uh, balance these two. But with enough practice, I'm confident that you guys can make it. One burning question that a lot of students have is that they're worried that since BMAT covers all three sciences, and at JC, they may have only taken uh, two sciences, uh, they may have trouble with that. So, Yanni, maybe do you have any tips for these people who are having these problems? Okay, so for myself, luckily I kept like my notes from secondary school, so they were very useful in preparing for the BMAT. Especially just now, the curriculum really helps a lot also because some of the physics formulas that you need to know will be listed inside actually. Um, another website that's very useful is actually um, BBC Bite Size because that's according to the UK curriculum, which is also what the BMAT is built on, so yeah. Sulaiman, any pointers? For myself, so I, I took bio and chem and I took triple science in secondary school, but because I took my BMAT while I was in NS, I was really, really unfamiliar with the physics curriculum at that point in time. So what I tried to do was, I didn't have any more physics notes, so I borrowed physics notes from my peers who took physics in JC, and whenever I had any questions, I tried to uh, ask them for explanations uh, or to try and understand how practice questions were phrased. Lah. So I guess it's a lot of, uh, I require a lot of help from my friends and they were kind enough to help me out, which is something that uh, I think can be useful for everyone here because everyone will not be taking three sciences at JC. So if you can help your peers out, either with biology or physics, it will be, be great for everyone. Lah. Speaking of which, according to the official BMAT curriculum, most of the topics tested are O-level topics with some A-level topics mixed in as well. So I think that even your secondary school textbooks may be a good source of information in uh, revising the topics that you, have, you may have dropped in JC. As far as I know, the A-levels is very close to the BMAT uh, testing date itself. And because of that, a lot of students are worried uh, they have to study for both tests at the same time. So uh, Nian Ye, as someone who has had to take A-levels almost concurrently with BMAT, what tips do you have for your peers? Okay, so I remember I had to take the BMAT one week before my camp practical. So my best advice for this is to start early because um, then it gives you like um, more time and like you can space out the revision more so that you don't feel like it's dragging you too much behind on your A-level revision or something. Sulaiman, do you have any experience from your friends taking the PMAT during your year? So some of my friends tried their best to allocate maybe one day in the week to devote just to PMAT and trying to revise for the PMAT. So I had a friend who only studied PMAT on Fridays and he didn't do anything in levels later on Fridays so that he got uh, enough time and put in enough effort into the PMAT. Yeah. So it's something that you can do, you can try and uh, manage your time well. It should be a breeze for you as well. Another pretty common question that many applicants ask is how much time per week uh, should they devote to preparing for the BMAT, especially since it's so close to the A-levels. And I think uh, Nyanyi did uh, mention part of it as well. Uh, so maybe I can give a bit of my input on it. Fortunately, I did not have to take the A-levels and the BMAT was held, I believe it was two weeks after my internal school exams. So I did spend those two weeks really preparing for the BMAT just committing myself to remember as much information as possible. One thing that is especially memorable to me is that uh, I used to spend quite a bit of time with my close friends sitting at Starbucks poring over each other's essay questions because uh, essays are pretty hard to mark for me, man. So uh, let's move on. One burning question that a lot of people had and ourselves included when we were still taking the BMAT is that do we need any extra courses or tuition for BMAT? Personally, I feel that it's not really necessary to go for extra preparatory courses or tuition. Uh, but I do have had friends who did go for uh, tuition classes and one thing I know is that they are very expensive classes. And of course, they definitely helped him prepare well for his BMAT. But 
to be honest, I personally feel that it's not necessary. Any work. I think honestly the resources that we mentioned just now would be sort of mostly sufficient to help in your preparation for the BMAT. Um, and this causes really um of course it's personal choice if you want to go for them. If especially if you feel like you face difficulty like having the discipline to set aside a specific amount of time each week for preparing for the BMAT amidst your A-levels, then these courses might be suitable because they cram a lot of content in like one to two days. Um, ultimately, it's still personal choice, um, but I personally didn't go for any of these courses. I agree with the both of you. I also didn't go for any special BMAT preparatory courses. I do have maybe one or two friends who did go for it, but uh, majority of my friends who took the BMAT did not uh, go for any special preparation. So uh, I agree uh, that it's really up to you whether you feel that it will help you or not. But largely, I feel that uh, just studying by yourself is uh, sufficient unless, as Nyani said, uh, you, you really, really feel that you need the, the crash courses to help you prepare. Let's move on to the next burning question, which is what's a good BMAT score for admission to LKC Medicine? As a point of information, uh, LKC Medicine does release some cutoff marks for BMAT for the previous years. So I, I can't remember what, what it is for the past year, but it is uh, freely available on the website, so you can use that to compare. But also just take note that the BMAT scores are bell curved, and it's also moderated as to the difficulty of the paper and how everyone performs. So the cutoff point for the previous years may not be as accurate for the current year, depending on how well everyone did. If you guys don't mind sharing, what BMAT scores do you guys get? Uh, my scores were quite average. Uh. So for both sections, I probably scored around, if I remember correctly, I scored like a 5.8 and a 6.0 for both sections on the section 2. Then my section, my writing section was a 4A. Nini, what about you? So for myself, um, I got 5.4 for section 1 and 6.9 for section 2 and then my writing was a 4.5A. For myself, I mean I took the BMAT like 2 years ago so I can't really remember. But for mine, I think I was around a 5 for section 1, around a 6 for section 2 and my writing was a 5A. I think uh, as we go to LKC Medicine, you'll see that there's a variety of BMAT scores across, across the batch. So, uh, really, there, there isn't so much consistency in the marks, so don't be too worried. It all depends on how the paper is graded on the year itself, so don't arrow in too much on the cutoff points of the previous years, although they do provide a well enough gauge for how well the batch previously performed. We hope that what we've shared has given you more confidence about taking the BMAT. Thanks, Sulaiman and Yan Yi for sharing your views. So all the best guys and we hope to see you soon. Bye bye.